Beautiful people, beautiful people. Time for the day. Mm, we almost done, y'all. We almost done. Yes, sis. I woke up and I saw it. I was like, oh, I like that style. And I had practiced it a little while ago. That's why I boo. That's why I boo. I was like, yes, I like that. Day, beautiful people. Blah, blah, blah. Your tongue tied already. Top of the day, beautiful people. Top of the day. Betwabu, betwabu, salubona, siemi. All right, y'all. Today it is Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. We over the halfway point in the Proverbs. And then we're going to read the last book, which is Psalms. And then we start back over. I'm super, 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 super excited to be starting back over this time as I've as over the last year, I've gained more understanding of <laughs> the scriptures as I've been studying them. And you'll notice, if you will, some of y'all ain't been here from the beginning. But if you'll notice back in 2018 when we started, all the way up to the current point, like you can tell that I understood more in the second year than I understood in the first year. And I definitely understand, um, uh, we'll be. Well, I definitely understand way more now. So when we start over in the third year, um, you're going to see that um, interjecting a lot more. I've definitely learned way more than I did in 2018 in regards to the scriptures, guys. You know, through um, research and just sitting, meditating and, and just, you know, and shucks. It's just, I'm, I'm super excited about it, so... All right, so today, y'all, it is Wednesday, September the 30th, 2020, day 624 of year two, and in a two-year consecutive day count, it is day 627, and remember, it is without the Sabbath and the Sabbath feast days added, and today, we are reading Proverbs 19, 20, and 21. Y'all watch the, uh, the, I'm gonna be nice. Y'all watched the first presidential debate last night. Boy, I'm sitting there with popcorn, like, and I'm like, I just, guys, if y'all seen it, it there, there is no words for it. It's really not. There is, there is no words for it. I mean, they, they tend to get pretty uh, heated anyway, but there were, there were some things that I was really, well, for one, I, I, either side ain't. Both, let's just say both sides is a mess. It's, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. And we ain't gonna talk about that. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave it where it is. If y'all watched it, y'all just. And if you haven't watched it, I actually got a replay of it um, on the page. I just, I, there, there, you couldn't handle it, Tiffany. There, there is no words for what happened last night. It's, it's really not. So, let's get to the proverbs, the reading for the day, y'all. Proverbs chapter 19. Better to be poor and honest than to be dishonest and a fool. Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then are angry at Yah. Wealth makes many friends. Poverty drives them all away. A false witness will not go unpunished, nor a liar escape. Many seek favors from a ruler. And everyone is a friend to a person who gives gifts. The relatives of the poor despise them. How much more will their friends avoid them? 
Though the poor plead with them, their friends are gone. To acquire wisdom is to love yourself. People who cherish understanding will prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished, and a liar will be destroyed. There was Josiah saying, hey, y'all see this little face poke around here. <clears throat> I read it again. A false witness will not go unpunished, and a liar will be destroyed. It isn't right for a fool to live in luxury or for a slave to rule over princes. Sensible people control their temple. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. The king's anger is like a lion's roar, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is a calamity to a father. A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as constant dripping. Women, those married women who are watching this, if y'all are a constant running faucet, learn how to get that in check. Get this under control. I'm telling you. It'll be a blessing to you, your spouse, and your household. And if you are not attached to a significant other, and this is out of control, you might want to learn to get that under control before you do attach yourself to someone. I'm just saying, it 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 will it it that a woman who can tame her mouth, but still not be um, let's see not be a woman who can control herself and can control her mouth and can understand the power that she holds um there it also still being truthful honest and firm and not allowing herself to be a doormat and run over you wield some awesome power in decisions that can be made in the life of your household your spouse and the outcome of your children. I'm just gonna just say that. I'm just say that for my women who are struggling with keeping this under control. Just practice it. It's only gonna be a blessing to you if you can tame it. All right. I just I just want to set that right there for y'all. Fathers, hold on. Did I stop there? Okay. I know. I'll just read that last verse again. A foolish child is a calamity to a father. A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as a constant dripping. Fathers can give their sons an inheritance of houses and wealth, but only Yahuwah can give an understanding wife. And all wives, although they're created by Yah, he don't give some women to some men just like he don't give some men to some women. It's Yahuwah. <laughs> just miss info for myself. You, Gary, you can always watch it once I post it if you missed it. Um, it's Yahuwah. Set, let no man put asunder what Yahuwah has joined together. Not what you didn't mash together because we see the results of that. Now, the people that y'all join together, they may not necessarily be a perfect couple. Nobody is. But through that process of marriage and growth, if they stick together long enough, it's the process of becoming one. You're not just married on, ooh, we the bomb. No. Y'all about to have some bombs go off in your house. Because you got two people from different walks of life. And some may come from the same walk of life. But they're still separate individuals. But also, in the process of merging and becoming one, remember this. You are not to lose yourself in your spouse. You are to merge and become one. One one uh let's see one what's the word i want to use one cohesive unit yet still displaying the individuality of your own personality but you teach and you walk and you live the same message whether you're business partners together your husband and wife business or you decide to go into the ministry or it's like it should be like this when you 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 know um people say when you see one you see the other or not necessarily you see one you see the other but when you hear one speak you can hear the it's like they speak the same it's like they always on the same page that's what i mean you know that that sounds better they're always on the same page you won't hear the husband speaking against the wife you won't hear the wife speaking against the husband they speak a consistent message to their children 
to the outsiders on whatever it is they do, they literally become one. They don't become one person. They're two separate people who are on the same page. They become a, a cohesive unit, a well-oiled machine working together. And that doesn't just happen when we say I do. Like, me and my husband, we just celebrated our 19th anniversary. And it's still sometimes up in here we want to, not like early on, we want to go for blows with each other. But there's still some things that is being worked out between us, you know. But there are some things we definitely, we are solid on together. You're not going to get a different answer from him than you're going to get from me. And you won't get a different answer from me than you're going to get from him, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it's a process of becoming one. Y'all have to learn how to walk together and work out the kinks deal with issues as they come up if you can't deal with it right now y'all gonna have to agree to disagree you know you're just gonna have to keep moving we'll circle back around to that we might need to cool off because that conversation just became a little too heated and we're gonna need to just shelf that for a moment you go to your corner i'm gonna go to my corner we're gonna talk about this again sometime we need to make a listen we can have this conversation Friday. Like, we need to put it on the calendar because, and we need to head after the kids go to sleep, or we need to leave the house where the kids uh, not going to hear this conversation going on. Especially if y'all tend to raise y'all voices, and being behind the privacy of your own bedroom door is just not enough soundproofness of what you need from the younger ears hearing what you guys are discussing. You know? So... We know them days. We know them days. We still have them days. We still have them days at 19 years of marriage. So I'm just saying, wives, it'll only do you well, especially if you're the hot head. Sometimes you got two hot heads, uh, but sometimes the wife is the hot head and she got a horrible mouth. Not horrible like you cursing, but you just can't seem to control your mouth. You got all this going on. You snapping your neck and you... you popping off at the lips and you just and 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 you do you keisha like we'll label you keisha keisha you need to get this under control and if y'all don't know by now when i'm talking about stuff like you see keisha get stoned last week keisha is my go-to name when i'm giving an example somebody about to get their tail to walk or somebody that's being ratchet is not following directions you know not following directions like a sheep being led to the slaughter but somebody just refused to do us right like no did you see what happened to Keisha last week? She got stoned to death. No, I'm not going that route, you know. So when y'all hear me say Keisha, I'm not talking about a specific person. I'm just using that name because when I was first giving an example, like two years ago, that was the first name that came to my mind. And a lot of times when I say Keisha, we know Keisha, we ain't never seen no white person <laughs> with the name Keisha. There may be somebody. We know Keisha's a black girl, and you can you can get the 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 image of what i'm saying no keisha no mm -mm. so if you keisha you need to get this under control sis get all this get all this under control you know so but it, it'll only be a blessing to you <laughs> it'll be a blessing to you um because you won't find yourself into in some situations that you're going to regret later and i ain't saying you always perfect because i had to learn it although i've been mostly reserved all my life there's been times that me and my husband go toe to toe and it's like you know what this is um we're gonna do this today i got time today let me tell you y'all i got a story right <laughs> then i'm gonna get back to this okay hold on where was i i'm gonna just read that over about the constant dripping at verse 13. Put a pin in that 13. Let me tell y'all this real quick. Let me give you an example, right? And I realized, let me tell you, I've been really reserved. I, that's something that is, okay, so let me be honest. I had a smart mouth growing up. But I think what really helped me tame that is by going into the military. Like, so I just had a smart mouth in my head because I couldn't pop off at my RDCs, right? You know, so I just like, okay, I'm just, I'm gonna just keep dating. I'm gonna just breathe, Pam, breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay, so one time early on in our marriage, and I think I was pregnant. I was pregnant with our third child, Joshua. Man, man, you got six now. So back in 2010, right? Um, I was talking to one of my girlfriends. You know, sometimes you just got a trusted girlfriend. It's like, look. Ugh. You know, so we was just talking about something, you know, she's married, you know, so we kind of talked about some things. And, um, 
And she was like, look, she was, and I realized, hold on, I always know we're about to get a good story when you start with, let me tell you, yeah, listen to this. Let me, let me, let me tell you what this did when I decided to let it go amok this particular night while I was pregnant now. Okay. So, talk to one of my girlfriends. And I have very few, but this particular one I think I talked to, but apparently she was having one of them nights too. And she was like, you know, sometimes you just got to let it go. I'm like, hmm, maybe, maybe not. She said, sometimes they just need to know that you ain't playing and you got to, you just, you just, you just, you need to lose your mind. You know, I'm like, you right. That might. And I started thinking about my husband. I said, well, my husband we're two different people and i am normally the quiet reserved one now, i'm gonna speak my mind i may let you run off at the mouth for a little while while i'm considering what if i even want to respond to you so that's how i learned how to keep peace in my house because in my marriage my husband is the hot head he's gotten a whole lot better <coughs> over these 19 years but this particular night I mean, I was with I was with it. I, I had time this night, you know, and I was feeling good. I ain't had morning sickness or nothing because some some of my marriages I had morning sickness all the way through. So I was just like, huh, we ain't doing this, but I had time. Matter of fact, with Josh, I had bad morning sickness until I found this uh this natural herb nature's pearl. You know, come right from the muscadine grape vine. Mind you, I wasn't a Nazarite at that time, so I could eat grapes. You know, so it literally it that's the point in time when I began to take control of my body and began to clean it out and I realized like, oh snap, and that's when I went uh plant based and everything, right? Okay. So but this particular night my husband he went he decided he wanted to go hang out with one of our friends you know um and so they were out you know he's a family friend became close or whatever y'all mean that's what i'm talking about you know those who know me so they went to go hang out and all that stuff and you know so i don't mind they, they shoot pool a lot i'm like okay cool and um what what oh, hmm okay so let's see i just want to make sure i word this without okay let me just okay so that particular night i'm like okay cool y'all gonna be hanging out y'all gonna be shooting pool a little bit late you know that's what they do and you know so they was out a little bit late and i was like okay i just fed the two kids that was in the house that we had at the time mind you i was pregnant with the third child so I made dinner for them. It was good. I knew they was been hanging out all night. They know when they get chicken wings and stuff while they at the uh, at the the pool hall and everything. So I was like, that's it. I ain't cooking, you know. So mind you, my husband comes from a home where his mom has never worked a job, so she's always been at home. And if y'all know my husband, you know there was always somebody home at his house. So he grew up where his mom cooked every single day like when i say every single i, I don't know there's probably a couple nights but she didn't but he remembers every single day having a hot meal right so i'm just like okay cool you know my mom cooked just about every night but she was working too so some of those nights fell on me pam this is i took this out she'll come and take this out boom 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 whatever it, it was a hot meal more nights than not you know but we always ate you know so but let me tell you my husband is a fool with it. I'm gonna just say that, mind you, we was on our third child, so this was, it was Josh was born in 2010, so this is 2010. We got married in 2001, so we had been married, to, you know, almost nine years, a little over nine years, right? You know, so you would think some of these things we got under control, and I'm like, you at the pool hall, y'all eating wings and stuff, and you got all this, so you shouldn't come home starving to death, right? And I knew they had had wings because our <laughs> Yeah, Patrice, you know, you know, Cindy Murphy is always got some cooking, you know. Um, and if you've been there, you know, Cindy Murphy always cook big meals, you know. So, um, and mind you, with our checking account, I have alerts that come to my cell phone. So, I knew because every time you swipe, I get an alert. So, I know y'all had, you know, and I can click on it and it'll open it up. And I saw y'all had chicken wings, right? You know, I tell you. I was with it this night. I had time. Look, and I was already listening to my girlfriend hyping me up. You, you just got pimp. You you just got to act a fool. You just, just got to go crazy one good time and then let them know she not playing. Let me tell y'all something. 
<laughs> First of all, <laughs> I should have been listening to her. Because <laughs> James Murphy is with it. He, he with it. And although it was late, he had time that night too. Let me tell you. I didn't, you know, I'm just like, oh, yes, yeah, 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 I'm going to do this. And boom, you know. But I'm not thinking, Pam, you know your husband. He do this full time. He with it 24 and 7. You just, you reserved this. Ew. You know, so I didn't calculate all that in my mind on how this would actually play out, right? Okay. So, uh, pregnant with Josh. I ain't cooking at night. I see you eating. Kids that ate. Time to go to bed. But I didn't go to bed. Kids went to bed and everything, you know. So, they come in the house and everything. And his normal thing, he come right in the house, go right to the kitchen, pop the microwave open. Because it's all, if, if it's not done, if he come in late, he always know that I take his food and I put it in a microwave. <laughs> abort mission. I should have aborted the mission that night. <laughs> Look, and I was I was waiting for it. I, somehow I knew he was going to say something, but he knew he had had chicken wings at the pool hall. And I knew he had chicken wings at the pool hall simply because the alerts came to my phone. And I know what y'all spit and, you know, that's, that's something we set up so we keep control of our money. Although we're still kind of being fools with it, but... I, I know you I know you had something in your belly. That that's the whole point. Right? And I was like, I'm not cooking tonight. And plus, like I said, I didn't have no morning sickness, even night sickness, nothing. I had energy. I was taking that nature's pearl and it's like, yes, tonight is the night I'm gonna lose my mind in this house. Look, so I was waiting for it. Door open. I'm like, yeah, don't trap me tonight, cause I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Come in the house, close the door, I hear it lock. This how I know, but this is how I knew I should have aborted the mission. <laughs> when I heard that, y'all know how microwaves sound. They got the push button, and you hit it, and you can hear it pop. When I heard that microwave pop, don't pop open, and then I heard it slam, I knew. <laughs> At that point, I should have aborted the mission and came up with some kind of stuff like, mm, babe, you home? You know, I fell asleep. I'm so sorry. Let me go ahead and fix you something. What you want to eat, baby? You know, I should have aborted the mission. I should have used wisdom <laughs> and not listen to my girlfriend hype me up since so you got to lose your mind one good time. Here come James Murphy. After I hear that microwave sound, I'm like, yes, it's time to go. We're about to do this. We're about to do this. I'm six months pregnant with Josh, ready to start a fight tonight. I had time. And I put the kids in the bed, and they were asleep. But they about to wake up, right? You come upstairs. Hey, you ain't cooked tonight? And I'm like, you mean to tell me? And I seen the alerts come through. And I know y'all had chicken wings. You still coming in the house expecting a hot meal you didn't already ate? <laughs> Look. And when I see him make this face, like, and if y'all know my husband, how he like, like, he do his neck, like, and blink his eyes like that, that should have been the second red flag, abort, 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 he about to go to 10, but remember, I had time tonight for him, he said, you didn't cook anything tonight. I said, look, hear me, here I go, rolling my neck like Keisha. Yes, I cooked, but I cooked for the kids, and they went to bed. But you ate while you was hanging out, shooting pool. And if you're hungry, you can go downstairs and fix you something to eat. Ain't nothing wrong with your hands. And mind you, Cindy son don't care about no pool hall chicken wings. Listen, he said, huh, look, <laughs> with his neck like, and I'm like, yes, it's really about to happen. And he said, hold on, girl, look. And we said, hold on, girl, that was my key to get ratchet like Keisha. Hold on, girl, girl. And I said, first of all, 
you'll be look and i was like okay look before when he was there i was like okay pam how you gonna go off you gotta be careful because you're pregnant so you can't be doing too much like i i thought it through in my head on how i was gonna act look and i looked at things in the room that i was gonna like slam on the floor and march out and slam the door and stuff like i really went through this through my head because this is out of character for me so i had to practice my role on what i was going to do tonight right so i'm like first of all i am not a girl i'm a grown woman him that's all it took for him this is my house that he started Hollering, I can't tell you what he was hollering and screaming because I was hollering and screaming. I said, I'm sick of you thinking I'm your maid cleaning up the house. Look, and while I'm doing this, I'm being extra animated with my hands and stuff. I am not your maid and I am not your mama. Oh, girl, ain't nobody said you was my mama. And matter of fact, mama, I, was, and I didn't hear what he said after that. As, after he was responding to me, ain't nobody say you was my mama, but my mama. And then I didn't even, I just got louder, so I don't know what he said about I'm not his mama and stuff like we was being a whole foolish mess that night in the house I said I'm sick of this you think I'm supposed to be cooking every single night and you got hands that work I am tired you know because I wasn't home all the time I was at tax practice you know we still had our business going <laughs> and I was doing taxes and stuff but we weren't in tax season at that time and I didn't have I wasn't doing anybody late stuff at that time either you know so I was like I'm sick and tired I'm always the one cleaning up this house y'all need to stop dropping y'all clothes on the floor put I was thinking of everything like seriously because although it's shenanigans that go on in my house like I had to pull for stuff to argue about because I'm the type of person that I I can deal with a lot and I can look over a lot of stuff and a lot of things just really don't bother me so I don't have issues cleaning up the house I don't have issues cooking I actually enjoy doing those things so and that's all I was talking about I just had to make this argument like my life was just oh I'm your mate I wasn't but I had time for him tonight because I just let my girlfriend talk foolish to me she doing this in her house like you just got to lose your mouth one good time you know i'm like yeah you're right you know maybe he might help out with cleaning the house a little bit more and stuff so we in there hollering and screaming woke the kids up and they come look and not by this time we move around the room you know how you having a fight and i'm sick of this and you move around the room and stuff and i took the hamper and pushed it and i'm like and i slammed my hand on the hurting my dirt their hand slapping it like pop pop and you're going to stop thinking that I'm just going to do everything. I'm not your man. I'm not going to bow down to you. Look, my voice was getting raspy. I don't raise my voice like this. I'm just, I'm thinking about this like, Pam, how much longer are you going to go with this? Like, when are you going to end this act, right? Because he was animated and I know the neighbors heard him because his voice is a whole lot louder than mine and i went to the top of the stairs i was kind of sick of this he said listen girl you ain't gonna raise your voice in this house and by this time i had went and looked like i really i almost put my darn self in labor at six months i got <laughs> look <laughs> i slammed the door he opened the door and then he was about to slam the door on me i picked my foot up and went to go <laughs> went to go kick the door to kick it open like yo close the door on me but i was the one that was walking out he said you done lost your gut and he was cussing what is wrong with you you know i said i'm sick of this don't none of y'all clean up after yourself get grown children mind you they weren't grown i was probably about 16 at the time jeremiah they like seven years apart so he was what seven years under that and so they stand back by the room like what is going on and i didn't know at the time that Elijah had called my sister Leisha. So he's like, I don't know what's wrong with mom. She's, I don't know, but it'll take Leisha to tell you the story of what Elijah was saying. So I'm not sure how much she heard <laughs> in the background. Mind you, I didn't tell her I was about to pull this at my house because I think, you know, we'll do this quick blowout one good time and, you know, boom, you know, uh, whatever, you know. So, but I was just having one of the moments. You know how sometimes women, you just need to take a break. You just out, look, I need. Just give me one day. No cooking, no cleaning, no no kids, no nothing. Uh, you know, one day vacation, that's all I need. Let me recoup, regenerate myself, and we good. I was just having one of those moments when I let my girlfriend talk crazy. Like, sis, you just need to act a fool one good time. 
I, I, I still wish this day I had never done that. I, that's why I'm like, I, I ain't listening to you no more. I ain't letting you give me no kind of advice. I'm going to keep handling my house like I've been doing it, right? You know, so I'm going down the stairs. And he was like, girl, he said, if you was, I, I'll push you down the stairs. I was like, I wish you would push me down the stairs. Like, I mean, I was, I mean, I was, guys, I was like, I wish you would push me down these stairs, but I was like, I'm thinking to my girl, Herbert, get your tail down these stairs, but he come after you and you slip. So I got down the stairs, and I'm in there, and I'm like, hitting the walls, like, boom, boom. And I wasn't really worried about my neighbors because they were super ratchet anyway. We had Africans living on this side, and they always had the police coming to their door, so they probably, they was like, oh, they human over there. You know, so I'm like, I'm being loud, and I'm trying to amplify my quiet voice by banging on stuff and throwing stuff and finally I was like I'm sick of it I was like no I'm done talking I ain't saying nothing else and I went back up the stairs and I slammed the door and I locked it I'm glad he didn't come back up there because had he came back up the stairs after me I would have probably had to keep the act going you know because I didn't really know how to end it for real because I didn't count on the fact that my husband was going to get ratchet right with me like I wish we had cameras in the house that were constantly recording that recorded that night like I'm like I would teach a class that let me tell you Keisha what you don't do roll the tape okay so right here he's about to come in the house and I should have made the decision Boom. Like Patrice said, abort mission. Here's what happens when you don't control your mouth and you don't abort the mission. And you try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody that's with it 24-7. This is what you don't do. Girl, I tell you, Elijah, I scared Elijah so bad. He thought me and James were about to go to blows in the house that night. I was slamming stuff. I was slamming uh, my hands against the wall, making all kind. And I was making sure I was hitting a hollow point to the wall to make sure it was louder. And I was slamming doors. And, and like I said, he wanted to go close the door on me. And I picked up my foot and wanted to go, boom, kick it. Don't you close the door on me. And I'm like, Pam, you was doing the most. You about to go on the label. You might, <laughs> you know. So I'm just like, oh. by the time we got done, he came in and he just grabbed me. No, he he did come back down the stairs. And he said, girl, and he just kind of like grabbed me. What is wrong with you? You know, I'm like, you should cook your own dinner. I'm sick of cooking all the time. Like, I really had to pull for stuff, y'all. You know, so that was the story where <laughs> we just talked about uh, a woman not keeping control of herself. And so we can kind of call this a little... Uh, experiment that I tried early on in my marriage well it just it, it didn't really fare well for me I'm just like Pambia you know you're the quiet reserve you should never listen to her again telling me she I let her hype me up see she just got to go in one good time you got to lose your mind in the house and I'm like girl the next time I saw her I said let me tell you something I ain't never listening to you again like we almost got into a fist fight for real last night me acting like a fool and she started laughing i say you laughing i almost had a freaking miscarriage last night acting a fool <laughs> so yeah i talked to her the next day um i, I thought it was a couple no because i said girl i mean it was really really vivid on my mind and I, I explained to her i didn't really go into a lot of details but i'm like i'm i'm just not listening to you no more because that 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 wasn't a good scene and i did not count on him responding the way that he did you know and when i know that he goes for he he 20 24 7 in the time of the day you want it he got it for you all right baby <laughs> <laughs> talking to the people about a, a a particular time in our marriage you know oh, so <laughs> oh he's talking to jeremiah so but guys, yeah, so that, look, I don't I, I, I talk so long about this. It doesn't log me out. So, yeah, ladies, I, I just wanted to share that story about a woman being a constant dripping and only Yahuwah can give an understanding wife, you know. So, I think about it. And let me be honest. The girl, the girlfriend that gave me that advice, I don't know what was going on in their house. And apparently, for her to give me that type of that, I, I can't really say that. But for her to give me that type of information, she must have been doing it more days than not. Since you got to lose your mind one good time. Because she has now been divorced for about four years. And she's remarried 
to another person. So I wonder if she's taking that same advice, applying it to the new husband. So I'm just saying, sometimes we just gotta, we gotta use wisdom in our households as wife because our dynamic is not the same as every other household dynamic. You know, if you've learned how to work with things and you know your husband's um, uh, mental mind frame and how he responds to stuff, and he knows yours and y'all learn how to kind of work together on some things just to keep each other <laughs> first of all living in the house together keeping your family together y'all keep working at that it's the process of becoming one so you got this personality need to merge with this personality but yet stay two separate individual people with your own thoughts your own decisions but those decisions come together at a meeting, okay, what do we want to do? How are we going to handle this? And like I said, if you can't come to an agreement, we just need to shelf this for now. We need to come back to it later, you know. So that's what we kind of learned to do. So that, yeah, just don't listen to people that's hyping you up to start a fight in your marriage. Like, especially when that's not the the way you handle your stuff anyway. Yeah, that was, that was bad advice. And I don't know what made me listen to her, you know, because I like... She had. She was married long. She'd been married at that time. She was married longer than me. So I think okay. Well, this might be something that might actually work. You know, I might get some a little more respect. You know, because guys sometimes they just not all guys are. I'm gonna wash the dishes, baby. Whatever. Not saying that my husband didn't because he would. You know. Um. But it was just this. I don't. I don't. I like. I said I was having that moment <laughs> in life where I need a break. You know. And I sit and talking to her. And I let her hype me up in a moment where I wasn't thinking clearly, you know. And I took this bum advice and literally almost set my entire house on fire with my mouth and acting like Keisha snapping my neck. I got time tonight for this, you know. So I'm just like, huh. Yeah, y'all don't do that, especially if y'all got a husband like mine. And he come from a family that's about it. Like Cindy Murphy, she ready 24 and 7. What, what you say? And she don't care who you are. Old man, child, pastor, teacher, she don't care. And my husband got that part of his personality from her. Like, without flaw. And he a male, so he's like, worse with it. And it's just like, yeah, just my advice. Don't take bum advice from girlfriends that's ready to hype you up. Says, no, you can, no, go do this. If she hyping you up, like, sis, you got this, start that business, whatever, yeah, take that advice. But when she's telling you to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your spouse, that's going to create problems in your home, especially over saying, you know you tired, you just need to go to sleep, and you're going to be okay. You're just having that moment because our emotions, and I was pregnant, you know, so I should have just, I just need to take a nap, and I'll be okay, you know, because, you know, yeah, so that's the story, y'all. Let me get back to this reading. So I, I, I'll read this again. A foolish child is a calamity to a father. A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as constant dripping. Oh, and the version that I gave y'all of what we were saying, as I was saying it, I was trying to be careful with some of the word, actual words that we actually said because what the version I gave y'all was still kind of tame. But even in the, the actual live version, there were curse words flying. Not just from his mouth, but I was cursing too. So I'm just be I'm tell the truth. And yes, I was a Christian. I just I just let it ride. I'm just being honest. <laughs> so hold on, Jeremiah. Did you take both of them out? No, nothing came. No, no, nobody came yet. I looked at all the unsets, all the blues were open. Uh, take it out anyway because Mr. Henry's is still full there's still got stuff in it so they haven't come yet so pull it out anyway alright y'all so a foolish child is a calamity to a father and a quarrelsome wife is as annoying as a constant dripping fathers can give their sons an inheritance of houses and wealth but only Yahuwah can give an understanding wife and like I said it's not always Yahuwah that puts uh, marriages together. He said, what well, Yahuwah has put together, let no man put us under. When we put stuff together, we tend to have a lot of issues that we would have avoided had we just used wisdom in choosing our mates, right? And, there, and we should watch the 
red flags that we see in their life over the course of time. Um, I say a, a, a year, maybe two years of getting to know somebody, their life, you need to see how they operate under pressure when they ain't got no money. If that's ever an issue with them, like you need to see them operate in every type of at least um, situations that you know you're going to deal with. They may not have children, but if they have siblings, see how they interact with their siblings. See how they interact with their parents. Because if they got a fly mouth at their parents, they're going to have a fly mouth with you. You know, and if they, you can see all of this stuff in the process of getting to know somebody, you know. Um, because everybody can't keep up a show of who they are pretending to be, but only for so long. You know, you got to be watchful for these things because if they're doing this now, they're going to do this later, you know. So at least until they get it under control and make a conscious effort to change some of the flaws in their, in themselves. All right. I'll just read this again. Verse 14, we in Proverbs chapter 19. Fathers can give their sons an inheritance of houses and wealth, but only Yahuwah can give an understanding why. Lazy people sleep soundly, but idleness leaves them hungry. Keep the commandments and keep your life. Despising them leads to death. If you help the poor, you are lending to Yahuwah, and he will repay you. Discipline your children while there is hope. Otherwise, you will ruin their lives. Hot-tempered people must pay the penalty. If you rescue them once, you will have to do it again. Get all the advice and instruction you can so you will be wise the rest of your life. You can make many plans, but Yahuwah's purposes will prevail. Loyalty makes a person attractive. It is better to be poor than dishonest. Fear of Yahuwah leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. Lazy people take food in their hand, but don't even lift it to their mouth. If you punish a mocker, the simple-minded will learn a lesson. If you correct the wise, they will be all the wiser. Children who mistreat their father or chase away their mother are an embarrassment and a public disgrace. If you stop listening to instruction, my child, you will turn your back on knowledge. A corrupt witness makes a mockery of justice. The mouth of the wicked gulps down evil. Punishment is made for mockers, and the backs of fools are made to be beaten. Come here. So make sure if y'all y'all listen to advice, y'all need to qualify that advice from the people you are listening to. And that's not just with being a wife or being a husband, because sometimes dudes, friends, you know, they can give them bum advice on how to operate and be a good husband or something to take control of their wives. Your wives are not meant to be controlled and neither women are you made to manipulate your husband into doing what you want. You guys should learn how to work together as a team and look out for the best interests of not also just yourself but of one another because if you were in a war or if something came down to it where our lives were at stake and our family was at stake and our children's lives was at stake, you need to know that you can trust one another. You know, you guys need to be so in tune with one another that if somebody tried to infiltrate your union, if they say, oh, we're your husband, um, such and such and such, you need to know and understand the character of your husband so much so you would know, no, my husband did not do that or he did not say that like you you talk to people and when you spend time with people you get to know their characteristics like okay let me give you an example of my son Isaiah my six-year-old son Isaiah he he with it 24 and 7 just like his daddy and just like his grandma he sweetest thing but don't come for him and if you don't come for him he gonna come for you anyway Six years old, sweetest thing. I love my baby. Let me tell you something. If somebody told me, if they came here and they said, your son, Isaiah, just came up to me and slapped me. Not that. that that's probably a bad example. Not say, slap me. Okay, let's say. I ain't going to say slap. He came up to me and he punched me in the back. If a child came to my door and said he punched me in my back, I'm going to believe that. But... I'm going to know that there was a good reason that he felt that he needed to punch you in your back. And that's something we're helping them trying to get their anger under. Not so much anger, but, you know, we got boys. So it's like WrestleMania 24-7. And if you say something to him, he ready to start fighting. Instead of like, no, you know, he, he doesn't really have my temperament. He has his father's temperament, and he ready to go 24-7. So if you came and said that, 
I would believe you. But if you came and told me that jo my son Joshua did that to you, I'm not going to believe you because Joshua has more of my temperament. He's more reserved. And he going to probably talk to you first. Like, first of all, I don't appreciate that. You don't do that. You know, so I would believe that about Isaiah, but I definitely would not believe that about Joshua because that's not the way Joshua operates. Isaiah 24-7. You might, I might have to come out there and break up a fight because I know Zay going to come for you. You know, <laughs> so don't even look at him wrong. He like, <laughs> he gonna come for you. Even my aunts can tell you when they come in here, he like the, they wrestling all the time. He don't care who you are, woman, child. I don't like listen. You can't punch your little sister back like that because she would it too. Both of them and they be fighting. I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? He'll come take her doll. Bella took her doll, baby, and twist her. I'm like. Why would you do that? You you seen movies where like little boys torturing their sister? Like that's Isaiah. I, Isaiah does that. I'm like, bro, wh where did you learn that from? You know, because you weren't alive when Jeremiah was doing this. And my 17 year old son Jeremiah, let me tell you something. Elijah was a very reserved child. My older son, right? I ain't really had no issues out of Elijah. But Jeremiah, let me tell you something. I used to have nightmares about my son Jeremiah that he was demon-possessed. Like, seriously. I'm like, I need to keep my eyes open with him. What is wrong with this child? <laughs> like, so if you would say that about Jeremiah or you say that about Isaiah, I would 100% believe you. I'm like, first of all, listen, okay, where he at? I'm coming. Come here. I'm like, oh, my God. What is wrong with you, boy? You know, so. But you should be so in tune with your husband. And your wife that if somebody tried to, like I say, infiltrate your union with some disinformation or some lies, you should be able to immediately pick up on that because y'all know each other's character so well. Or say your husband said, let this example, not that this will happen. But y'all seen it on movies. Say, um, you ever seen the movies where somebody break into your house and they hold you at gunpoint or something and somebody just happens to come to the door. Hey, we heard, somebody called the police. We heard a disturbance. He said, you better answer though. He's standing right behind the door with the gun. You better answer. You better not say nothing. You know, um, you should be able or say your husband call at that time and be like, hey, babe, what's for dinner? You should say something like, uh hot dogs and pork and beans you need to say something and your husband needs to know like okay my husband hates hot dogs and pork and beans so when you give him the answer hot dogs and pork and beans he should know wait a minute she know i don't like hot dogs and pork and beans um and he shouldn't immediately know something is wrong and your answers y'all y'all get what i'm saying but i'm trying to give like a good example but you should be so in tune to where you know immediately something is wrong and we need to he need to hurry up and get to the house or you know because you didn't gain clues you know we me and my husband actually talked about that i said so if something ever go wrong you know i said and you call me and you ask me something first of all i'm gonna take the conversation if the killer whoever don't say put it on speak so i can hear the conversation but we need to know um that like you need to hear it in my voice or something that that's how in tune you guys should be with one another to where you know no that's not the character of my spouse and no like there's easy ways to keep people you know out of your marriage and without bringing strife or having friends give you bum advice that you take things like that y'all right so when you, when you come together as a cohesive unit it's it's it's, it's good for you and it's good for him or her if you're a man. It's good for your wife and it's good for your children, you know? Because you're modeling your life to your children. And a lot of times they hear what you say, but they're going to do what they see you do, you know? So that's why it's good for us as we grow over the years to get better, you know? And so it's only by the grace of y'all that we made it to 19 years. Like, seriously, there was days where I'm like, yeah, this we're not going to make it. Like, we are not going to make it, you know. But I do believe that our union, y'all put together, I, I really do, you know, which is probably a mark of why we've made it so long, you know. Not that we've always done everything right, because we absolutely have not, you know. Like, days like, I, I'm packing my bags, I'm out, bruh. I'm, I'm gone, you know. So, but you have those moments. Like I say, you just gotta, you just gotta, some things, it, it may be pride issues, you just need to swallow it, okay, and just listen to one another. Sometimes, if you need to go get counseling, go get counseling, like seriously. Because some things, especially if you've already built a family, some things is just not worth tearing your family apart, you know. Because that's gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, that's gonna do more damage <clears throat> than you 
just taking a moment and swallowing your pride and say, you know what, I was wrong. You you right. Or you might be right. Let's okay, let's do it your way. If it ain't gonna cause you to get shot, me to get shot, or something to happen to the kids, let's try it your way. You know, y'all gotta learn how to compromise with one another. So guys, and I ain't even read the second proverb, so let me stop running my mouth. Proverbs chapter 20, second second chapter for the day. Wine produces mockers, alcohol leads to brawls. Those led astray by drink cannot be wise. The king's fury is like a lion's roar. To rouse his anger is to risk your life. Avoiding a fight is a mark of honor. Only fools insist on quarreling. Boy, I tell you, that night when I decided to act the fool, I'm telling you, boy, I was, I was a complete fool that night because I, I, was, I, I was planning, I, I was ready for a fight. Bella, you got to turn it down. Oh, Bella, turn it down, please. Pause it. I'm almost done. Just turn it down a little bit. A little bit more. Yeah, you got to turn it down a little bit more. A little bit more. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, just pause it for a second. I'm almost done. Avoiding a fight is a mark of honor. Only fools insist on quarreling. Those too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food at the harvest. Though good advice lies deep within the heart, a person with understanding will draw it out. Bella, I'm going to take it and I'm going to hold it until I'm done. Many will say they are loyal friends, <laughs> but who can find one who is truly reliable? The godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children who follow them. When a king sits in judgment, he weighs all the evidence, distingu distinguishing the bad from the good. Who can say, I have cleansed my heart? I am pure and free from sin. False weights and unequal measures. Yahuwah tests double standard. Yahuwah detests double standards of every kind <clears throat> even children are known by the way they act whether their conduct is pure and whether it is right ears to hear and eyes to see both are gifts from Yahuwah but you still got to turn it down some let the baby cry turn it down just a little bit more I know turn it down just a little bit more for me please I'll turn down my neck can you just pause it just pause it for a second. Okay, just leave it like that for a quick second, all right? Ears to here and leave it right there, right there. Just right there. Just stop. Just give me like three minutes. <clears throat> Ears to here and eyes to see. Both are gifts from Yahuwah. If you love sleep, you will end in poverty. Keep your eyes open and there will be plenty to eat. The buyer haggles over the price saying it is worthless and then brags about getting a bargain. Wise words are more valuable than much gold and many rubies. Get security from someone who guarantees a stranger's debt. Get a deposit if he does it for foreigners. Stolen bread tastes sweet, but it turns to gravel in the mouth. Plans succeed through good counsel. Don't go to war without wise advice. A gossip goes around telling secrets, so don't hang around with, the, with chatterers. If you insult your father or mother, your light will be snuffed out in total darkness. Do not dishonor your parents. That's the first command to come with a promise. Honor your father and your mother. Oh, Trina, I missed your comment. She said, for those that can't see, that's some good stuff, Pam. Thanks, Pam, because me and mine, we both with it. <laughs> I bet you should be a fly on our wall. I can imagine, Trina, I know you with it. From the time we've been in the military, I know you with it, sis. And if your husband is with it is just half as much as you i'm just saying don't burn your house down <laughs> okay if you insult your father or mother your light will be snuffed out in total darkness an inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end don't say i will get even for this wrong wait for you who are to handle the matter Yahuwah detests double standards. He is not pleased by dishonest scales. Yahuwah directs our steps, so why try to understand everything along the way? Don't trap yourself by making a rash promise to Yah and only later counting the cost. A wise king scatters the wicked like wheat, then runs his threshing wheel over them. Yahuwah, Yahuwah's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. Unfailing love and faithfulness protect the king. His throne is made secure through love. The glory of the young is their strength. 
The gray hair of experience is the splendor of the old. Physical punishment cleanses away evil. Such discipline purifies the heart. Last chapter for the day. Trained to go over here. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki said she trained to go over there. Yeah. Last chapter for the day, y'all. Proverbs chapter 21. The king's heart is like a stream of water directed by Yahuwah. He guides it wherever he pleases. People may be right in their own eyes, but Yahuwah examines their heart. Yahuwah is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices. Haughty eyes. Let me just go back. I'm up. Let me come back to this last verse real quick. Remember, we're talking about the sacrifices. I was taught the post that I made the other day. You'll see it is pretty long. It's almost like a whole dissertation. But that's what I've learned so far from offering sacrifice. Remember, I was like, something is wrong with this. And y'all, why would you even test Abraham like this? Because it's things that has been tampered with and added to the scriptures. And that, that oldest perfect example of me understanding Yahuwah's character and how he operates. You know, and that's what started. I was like, Father, this, this, is, this is not lining up. And as I read, constantly read over and over the Old Testament and listened to it, I'm like, this just doesn't fit. Something is wrong with these sacraments. They just don't fit with your character, y'all. And that's, listen, and you, if you go through and once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yahuwah is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifice. It's like you wouldn't have any need to go and try to offer a sacrifice if you just do what's right. I couldn't say anything because I was driving, but yes, yeah, TT, yeah. Says, yeah, I know you trained to go too. You like, mm, you like half and half, like you reserve, but if you need to get with it, it's like, let's go, you know. But I, you, you will keep it reserved as much as possible to somebody come they want to pull you into it you know but yeah you kind of like half and half you know so uh okay yahuwah is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices haughty eyes a proud heart and evil actions are all sin by the way awesome response in response to the comments to your original comment on that video oh tiffany i'm still waiting for her to respond you know some people went completely ham on that like look I, and i didn't respond to it she said you need to put the set apart word down i'm like and i could tell in her response to me i was like you don't even read it do you you know so I, I just didn't respond to a couple of them um because my response wasn't to them she said leave a comment let's have a conversation because she said i'm not always right she said i'm not afraid of being wrong so i put up there what y'all had been showing me in my study and i backed it up with proof she said because ain't she said not the first hebrew been able to show me or pretty much disprove and when she started saying the sacrifice because two people sent it to me i didn't even know she had posted the video um two people had sent. i was like i must need to watch this is a really quick video um i'll post it down since we're talking about it now i always if i talk about something i like to show y'all proof and give it to you um so i'll post it here in the uh comment section when we done so if you haven't seen if you know, don't know what we're talking about i'll put it here but we were actually talking about the sacrifices because you were here even in like messianic congregations and stuff where they start talking mm -hmm. about like the rebuilding of the temple and all this you know and some people they just don't care about it but they talking about some scriptures oh, when the sacrifices are going to start again this and this i was like something is wrong with that i said i'm telling y'all and it bothers me because yah says that no one is going to hurt on all his holy mounts i mean you ain't gonna be slaughtering no animals so why is y'all continue teaching that we're gonna start up sacrifices and stuff again like when uh, y'all know y'all y'all hear me said i was like it's something about the sacrifices that would not let me go like y'all's like he just keep hitting me with i was like i must really need to study this i said because i know something's wrong because that's something that's always bothered me i didn't really talk about it but i'm like yeah i just don't really believe y'all you would ask abraham to go sacrifice his own child and if you did why would you do that what type of point are you trying to prove with you being a creator to tell a mere human man to go kill his child like what point are you proving that's and i don't think that's to test your faith like you do whatever i'm telling you eating y'all no that that's that is like i said at the last few years as i constantly read over and i got really and that's why i tell you i said put away all interpretations the church the church then taught you about what to believe about the old testament and just go read it like it's a book like seriously put everything you done learn just 
put it over here and read it. I said, read it first. The first time I said, read it a few times. Read it first as the base story. Understand the characters. Who's who? What happened? Like, seriously, read it. Like, you're going to take a test on this. And school. like, okay, what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve? Like, simple stuff. Understand what happened, this, this, and that. Like, understand the characters. What happened? Why they fight and why the quarrels and quarrels amongst one another. Like, seriously, understand the base story. Like, if you telling somebody about a movie or whatever not giving an interpretation of a movie but tell what happened in a movie understand the basic story of what happened these are real people who live and just tell what happened you know from the story that you read how god responded or how y'all responded to it and then you can understand some things you learned about the character of the different people and you learn about Yahuwah's character and the way he always responded to them on what they was doing and you will realize that Yahuwah said I don't want sacrifice and you will realize understand his character he was always telling them stop uh, uh, sacrificing your children to Molech you do not kill your sons and daughters he said do not kill people he said a righteous person cannot die for the wicked like he constantly said it so as those things began to jump out at me, the sacrifices became more of an issue. I'm like, something is definitely off about this, you know. So, I'll just make a long story short, I repeat it again. So, like the other day, and I was just like, I was like, Father, I said, and it's really strong on the inside because we had the Day of Atonement now. And it's like, oh, I mean, well, we, it wasn't the Day of Atonement that day. <clears throat> it was a few days before the Day of Atonement. And I'm studying. I was like, something. I said, Father, I don't get it. I am not making a connection. I said, and even if we still stayed in the land, because you got some people there, there, ooh, I can't go kill an animal. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to do what's right. So I ain't got to go kill no animal, you know. And Yahuwah constantly talks about this. But you have to remember, Yahuwah said, do not be like the nation surrounding you. Do not do what they do because what were they doing? They were sacrificing their children. To, they were killing innocent children to atone for their sins, offering gifts of innocent blood <clears throat> to the gods, you know, to atone for their sins. And the same stuff was infiltrating Yahuwah's people. He said, Here's what you do. Here's how you conduct yourself. Do not do this. Do this. Don't do this. Here's how you respond to this type of situation. I'm like, wait a minute. And so when I heard y'all and I asked myself, and I'm dealing with this, so I'm like, okay, Father, what about Abraham? I said, because I don't, I don't understand this, you know. Um, and Yahuwah said, I was like, I don't understand why you would tell him to sacrifice his son. And we know that he did it. He said, my son. Y'all will provide, and a ram was provided as the story goes. But when y'all said to me, he said, it never even crossed my mind. Meaning that it never crossed his mind to tell Abraham to go sacrifice his son. Now, some people, oh, that's heresy. That's what it says. Yeah, I know that's what it says. But if you understand the character of Yah, you can understand when something doesn't line up as you're reading this book. Because we know it's been manipulated over time. And once you begin to understand the character of Yah and how he speaks and how he deals with his people, you will, your red flags will go off when something is off. And either you're missing something. Or either something has been added or something has been taken away and you're missing a piece of the puzzle. And that's what I understood as I began to go through this. So, And I realized that that was added because it didn't line up. And Yahuwah constantly said about human sacrifice. He does not allow human sacrifice. But the animal sacrifices is a direct connection to the buildup of the human sacrifice in the New Testament. P I, I, people just like, because... We were brought up to believe this, and a lot of people don't go do the study, and they don't really understand and know the character of Yah. And so they're like, oh, well, what about this? And God has always shown up to me. Yes, he has, because that was a part of the promise that he told Abraham in Genesis. When you read Genesis um, 15, 12, when he talks about the covenant, he said, not only would Abraham be the father of many nations, but the land of Canaan, he would give to all of his descendants forever. And also a part of that covenant, he said, I will be your God and the God of your descendants forever. We are those descendants and all those who would accept you who has lost statutes and commands and live and clean their lives up and be good decent human beings treating each other fairly and doing what's right and they decide to come in he said you are to treat them no different than a blood-born son and daughter you are to treat them like family and the same rules go for them uh 
that uh, they are to follow the same rules that I gave you. The same rules apply to everybody. Like, you don't get a different set of rules than they get. Because if they come and stay in my house, they're my children. I'm going to treat them all fairly. Same rules for everybody. There is no favoritism here, right? You know, so once I understood that, it's easy now as I go through to pick out the 11. Yep, that was added. That don't even. And you can further prove it if you go back into some of um, the original text. But also... Even some of the Septuagints, I realize, have been manipulated. You know, so you have to go back to, like, some of the earliest stuff and find out where the changes happen. But too many people don't do that deep of a study to figure out. They say, oh, we went back to Septuagint. Which Septuagint did you use? You know, because I can tell you there were shenanigans there with those two, you know. So, but, and you can just kind of look at things and it can prove, you can, you can test it today. Just look at stuff with common sense, right? Seriously, you know, but guys, there's, they they literally still are doing animal sacrifices and human sacrifices today, you know? So you mean to tell me that, and that's a major thing. Yahuwah says, I am not a man that I should lie. And people teach, oh, he came down himself to be a part of his, uh, nope. Yahuwah said, I change not. I am not a man that I should lie. I mean, what are we going to do with scriptures like that? And I'm talking about things that come from Yahuwah's mouth himself, not third and second party people. Because remember, Yahuwah is the ultimate authority. So I don't care who said what in the Old Testament or the New. What did Yahuwah say? He's the ultimate authority. That's who we should be listening to. Hands down, if we got to go with what Paul said or what, what he said or what he said, Okay, what did y'all say about this? Because he's the ultimate authority. Let's go with him. You know, and there's another big contention between uh, Yahuwah's people because they believe this, but they don't realize they are still in, a, in, in the act of sacrificing innocent people and innocent animals and stuff like this. When Yahuwah said, I simply want you to do us right. I simply want you to do us right. He said, I do not desire sacrifices. I desire obedience. And when you mess up, I desire that you just come to me <laughs> and repent. Tell me you was wrong. Let's talk about this. You was wrong. Okay, do what's right. Like and that's what I, I, I pretty much kind of summed all that up in that response to her. And I put it there because you know you you saw some of the comments and some people they just going you know and I know dealing with her you got to come with receipts and I'm like um here for this. This is what I do. I'm here. I got all the receipts you want. They not my receipts. Well, let's pull it from. From the actual source and let's only use what Yahuwah said out of his own mouth because you cannot deny this with what y'all said so are you now going to believe the teaching that you've been taught growing up over what Yahuwah said out of his own mouth I learned not to do that that gets us in trouble real quick and a lot of Yahuwah's people are still in the act of worshiping Molech and don't even realize it and I'm just like bro come on you know and I don't argue with people I'm like simply you have to go read it don't read what you have been taught to read and see it how you have been taught to see it but you need to read it in the light of Yahuwah being the authority and nobody else because you have to remember even in the New Testament all they had was Torah so now we have taken a New Testament and made it authority when you who is always the authority, I change not. You who is ultimate authority, they use Torah as authority. So now, why should we put aside what they also use as authority and use their bunch of letters and stuff? And this is the authority now. Mm, that's how we. That's why we're in the land of our captivity today. Our lives proves that we are in a mess. Our very lives and our state where we're at, the sons and daughters of Jacob, are proof because he said we will find ourselves here if we ever turned away. So what we've been doing, worshiping multiple gods, Yahuwah said, I am one. Here, O Israel, I, Yahuwah, am one God. I am one God. Proof today shows us that we have turned away from his laws, his statutes, and commands. Like, we are living proof today here in the land of our captivity, are living proof that we did not put away the human sacrifice and the animal and all this stuff. We were in rebellion. We are living proof today that what he said is true. We are, we are here today because of that. All right, so guys, let me finish. We're in the last chapter. I know we, this is going on way too long, but I'm, Tiffany, you asked, you said it, so I had to... Just in case some people are like, okay, what she talking about? So I put that video down there. The video, like 20, I think it's like 22 minutes. If you get a chance, if you haven't seen it already, watch it and then you'll see my comment. It's like last night I looked, it's like 
I checked to see if she had responded. It, last night it was like 675 comments. But if you want to go, I was the, actually the second person to respond on it um, that I saw. Um, but since then, and I think it pushes the comments all the way down. So just look for Murphy Murphy Tribe. I'm Murphy Tribe on YouTube too. So just look for Murphy Tribe. And I'm in the picture and I got a head wrap on. So you'll know that's me. So that's my comment. You got to scroll. Just scroll till you see that. And you can see my response to her. Um, but I actually took my response and I made it a teaching on Facebook. So you may have already read it, but you can see, but look at some of the other, look at the contention of both sides and stuff, how some people are holding what other people say as the truth. And you have a, a decent fair amount of people like, wait a minute, y'all said this. So it's like, you got people's like, oh, we've been taught this and this is what, and no, this is it. And no. And then you got people like, no, y'all said this, that we're supposed to be listening to y'all, not to everybody else. Granted, if people are teaching, they should be repeating word for word what y'all say. They should not change the message of what y'all said. They can break it down, help you understand it better, but the message should not change. You shouldn't add to it and you should not take away. Um, the message should be the same. It should be conveyed whether you, you need to translate it, but it, the integrity of the message should stay the same, you know, um, and that's what's happened. The integrity of the message has not stayed the same. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to bring, we're trying to turn everybody back to y'all, but it looks like we are, because we've stepped out now, look like, wait a minute, you're doing something different. What you're doing? This is not what we've been taught, says No, I'm, I'm telling you, we've been taught wrong because the integrity of the message has changed. We are proof here in captivity, us being murdered and killed in the streets. The sons and daughters of Jacob are proof that what we're doing is wrong. And we're calling out to the wrong guys. True enough, when Yah shows up for us, you're still giving credit to another God or false gods, false deities, calling him by another name because the promise to Abraham, he said, I would always be your God and your descendants, God, forever. So when you get answers to your prayer and you cry out and you've had these supernatural experiences, although you take those supernatural experiences and you credit them to Jesus Christ or to whoever, or you say the Holy Spirit, you will say, I am one God. So I, and I used to do it too. That's why I stopped using multiple names and I, and it's confusion. I even, and, and when you, Watch my videos from earlier on. You will see me using those names. But as I understood more, I began to adjust myself and align myself. So now I understand that it's always been y'all. When I was growing up, I used to be like, thank you, Jesus. And, you know, oh, the Holy Spirit told me. But Yahuwah said, it's been me the whole time. That's been my promise to Abraham that I would be here for you. I would be your God and a God to your descendants. I would be your mighty one. I would be your help forever. That's my promise. So when I was calling him or relating what I heard to the Holy Mom. Spirit or to Jesus Christ, it's Mom. always been you. It's always been the creator of the earth because he is our God. He is our help. He is our deliverer. So now that I understand that, I stop using multiple names and I address him only. He said, there's only me. That's how he started teaching me. He said, I am a God. I am one. Not one split up into three, not multiple people. He said, I am one God. You know, so when I, and I'm telling y'all, although some of my prayers and my dreams and stuff, it was happening, I understand it's been y'all all this time. When I pray under with understanding now and I address him and only him, I tell you, I'm telling you, you just, I, don't take my word for it. Go test these things and see if they're true. My prayers have never been answered so fast in my life because now i'm praying with understanding i know who i'm talking to you know and so i was like oh snap and so that's why i just tell people i don't because i was there i used to be there what you talking about oh you denying the christ no i'm not denying the christ because y'all as we see that the deliverer of christ messiah y'all is the christ he is the and messiah i think is a bad word not okay not a bad word, but the way they portray it and how it's been taught. Um, because, guys, it's, some people just want to take this. Okay, let me try not to use that word. Okay. With each generation, we can see the different stories if we read all the Old Testament Bible stories. With each generation, Yahuwah always raised up somebody, whether it was the prophet Moses or it was the judges, Samuel, uh, Saul, uh, Nehemiah, we got Ezra, different ones through different generations. Daniel, they would be, and 
what you hear today in some places they're like messiah figures but i don't want to use it because it's still like confuses people sometimes and they're like oh no you because they still don't realize that yahuwah is not three people split up into one he is one person so when you hear that voice and some people relate it to the holy spirit okay you can say that yahuwah is holy he is a holy entity he's a holy spirit yes it's Yah, but it's Yah. Or they say, thank you, Jesus. No, Jesus didn't do this for you. It was Yah. When I realized that all of that that I was relating, because it became confused. Okay, who do we who do we pray to? Do we pray to Jesus? Do we pray to the Holy Spirit? Oh, wait, God, wait. Isn't But isn't God the... Didn't Jesus say, talk to him? It's like, and it became... It's, I, I just put away all confusion and try and just keep it simple. And even I teach my children that there's only Yah. We pray to Yah. And whatever we ask, we ask Yah in your most holy name. And even my children, they, they do it without fail. Like, Ma, ask Yah this, this, and this. Like, if they have an issue, let's ask Yah. Let's ask Yah. You know, and it's a process. I get it. And it's hard for some people simply because you've been raised in a place where you've learned to love and rely on the name of jesus and this is our go-to but as you grow and you understand you know just like and this is probably like a bad uh it's probably like a bad example but i think it will convey my point it's just like it if you grew up like this you grew up thinking oh it's santa claus santa claus is bringing gifts thank you santa claus let's write santa claus a letter not knowing all the time it's been mom and dad or dad or mom you know but we're giving that praise and honor to santa claus but you're giving thanks without understanding if you understood let's put away the childish things and the myths and let's give honor and praise and thanks and honor just honor Give the honor to whom the honor is due to. You know, thank you, Mom. I appreciate this. You know, so even in things like that, as we're going, okay, we cut out these fables and fairy tales with our children. No, it is us, and we decided to. And even while we were still celebrating Christmas, we transitioned in different phases and different things. And so things we slowly began to put away. As we understood, we incorporated. So that's why people are like, oh, they, they still use the name Jesus a lot. It's like, okay, you know, and that's really, once I understood, Understood that I stopped because when I started, it's like, no, you don't pray to Jesus, we pray to y'all. And I was like, okay, I get it, I understand. So I stopped doing it because everybody is they grow, some people grow faster, some people grow slower. But I understand, and I look at the process of how I proceeded and grew, they have to go through the same process, they have to understand that it's y'all. And as they begin to understand, they will naturally, if their heart is a Isaiah. I'll get you something. Wait a minute. That's fine. Hold on. As they understand and they realize and their heart is to do what's right and they really have a heart to serve y'all, they're they're gonna make the they're gonna on their own, they're gonna make the transition to stop using multiple names and give honor and glory to Yah because it's only him. All praise, honor, and everything is due unto him, and that's who we give it to. Thank you, y'all. Thank you for this roof over our head. Thank you for warning us about this. Save from an accident. Sometimes we be like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Like, no, thank you, y'all, because it's you who saved us. You kept this from getting this bad. Thank you, y'all. Like, and when I tell you guys, there is it's something different that changes. Prayers are answered faster. Things come to us faster that we need. Because we now we worship Yah with understanding. You know, he said, you worship somebody you don't even know. When you, when I hear people still you, and I'm, I'm not going to say it because I can clearly see there are some people who still use the Holy Spirit or they say Jesus. But I can clearly tell that's the workings of Yah in their life. And you can't tell them that it's not, but they still attributing and using the names. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm not going to go there with you. I understand that that's Yah in your life. And as he transitions you in your understanding and your growth, you're going to understand that. How do I know that? Because he says in Hosea, there's going to come a point in time where he's going to remove all the names of Baal out of his people's mouth. And they're only going to speak his name. I understand that. So that's why I kind of eased up on people with the name. And, you know, so that's just my growth in the last two years. And it, it it's, it's a humbling thing. And, and I'm, I it, it it makes me smile. I'm like they growing. They gonna get it. They gonna get it. Y'all, it's you. I know it's you. Thank you for what you just did in their life. You know. So, all right. So I post that video down, and you can see. All right. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Wealth created by a lying tongue is a vanishing mist and a deadly trap. 
The violence of the wicked sweeps them away because they refuse to do what is just. The guilty walk a crooked path. The innocent travel a straight road. It is better to live alone in the corner of an attic than with a quarrelsome wife in a lovely home. Evil people desire evil. Their neighbors get no mercy from them. If you punish a mocker, the simple-minded become wise. If you instruct the wise, they will be all the wiser. The righteous one knows what is going on in the homes of the wicked. He will bring disaster on them. Those who shut their ears to the cries of the poor will be ignored in their own time of need. A secret gift calms anger. A bribe under the table pacifies fury. Justice is a joy to the godly, but it terrifies evildoers. The person who strays from common sense will end up in the company of the dead. Those who love pleasure become poor. Those who love wine and luxury would never be rich. The wicked are punished in place of the godly and traitors in place of the honest. It's better to live alone in the desert than with a quarrelsome complaining wife. They ain't letting up on that quarrelsome wife. I'm telling you, the wife carries great influence in her household if she can learn how to keep it together she like the queen bee in a hive like seriously if you understood and the, the the husband is just as powerful but when you come together as a cohesive unit and work together and work out some of these things that you got going on guys you you hear some people say oh they're a power couple not a power couple in, res, in regards to money but it will become that too if you can get some of these other things under control and learn how to flow together you know it's a beautiful thing we ain't there yet. We growing, but we we we've seen some fruit of being on the same page and doing things together in agreement. The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. Whoever pursues righteousness and unfailing love will find life, righteousness, and honor. The wise conquer the city of the strong and level the fortress in which they trust. Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut, and you will stay out of trouble. Mockers are proud and haughty. They act with boundless arrogance. Despite their desires, the lazy will come to ruin, for their hands refuse to work. Some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. Hey, guys, calm down in there. The sacrifice of an evil person is detestable, especially when it's offered with wrong motives. A false witness will be cut off, but a credible witness will be allowed to speak. The wicked bluff their way through, but the virtuous think before they act. No human wisdom or understanding or plan can stand against Yahuwah. Ain't that the way? know what we was talking about? Yahuwah is the foundation. He is the sounding board of everything we do. Of all the information we receive, all the teachings that we get, we need to sound that. We need to weigh that against what Yahuwah has said. No human wisdom or understanding or plan can stand against Yahuwah. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to Yah. And that, my beautiful people, is our reading for today. I know that was extremely long, but, you know, I, I, I thought some of the stories were in order to help you, you know, help, to help kind of drive the point home. Okay, so let's go right to the blessing. Number chapter 6. Y'all know that the first 21 verses is the Nazarite Bible. All right, so the blessing. Number 6, verses 22 through 27. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And they shall put my name, Yahuwah's name, on the children of Israel. Remember, Israel is not a place. Israel is a people. Israel was first a person but his name originally at birth was jacob jacob's name was changed to israel and when he died the whole nation everybody who descended from him were referred to as israel or jacob or the sons and daughters of jacob and their people named their lands after themselves so a lot of time we hear israel we think the land but no israel was a person first then they became a nation and they named their land after themselves it's all think about it you name your businesses after you or after your children we put street if we own this we that's murphy lane right there and it's the same thing we're doing the same stuff you know and they shall put my name <clears throat> upon the children of Israel or upon the sons and daughters or the descendants of Jacob. And I will bless them. I, Yahuwah, 
will bless them. So if we know <clears throat> that all our blessings come from Yah, we should put Yah's name. May you be blessed and may you prosper. May you will cause you to prosper in all that your hands touch and all that you take on. Because your blessing is ultimately going to come from him anyway. So let's pray and bless people with wisdom and understanding, you know. All right, y'all. <clears throat> I'm done. With that being said, beautiful people, I love you. And I'll see you bright and early in the morning. Remember, tents is coming up starting Friday. Feast of Tabernacles. And I explain what I think I do a good, give you a good understanding of what it is if you don't know what it is. So, if not, I'm not going to explain it today simply because we're going on long enough. But go to tomorrow. I'm sorry. Yesterday's video, towards the end, I explain it. And they're getting loud. So, I love y'all. See y'all bright and early. 7.15 Eastern Standard Time. Same place. Same channel. Peace.